housing market outpriced and poised to crash? This question has been making the rounds amongst all stakeholders since the AMBIT report came out in June 2015, which spoke of the possibility of prices coming down by as much as 50%. Needless to say, there was a huge outcry from Mumbai developers who debunked the report and said there was simply no room for prices to come down. We also examined some facts here on the Realty Debate on the Property Show and found that some of the premises were absolutely not sitting pretty. Ever since though, what has happened? There have been several arguments supporting one hypothesis or the other on whether prices have room to come down more or not. But now as we approach the festive season, the buyer who's been sitting on the fence really needs to make up his or her mind and decide whether he should bite the bullet when it comes to buying a home in Mumbai. So today, that's exactly our focus. Sanjay Dutt, Executive Managing Director, South Asia Kushman in Wakefield, India joins me. Prasad Shetty, Urban Plan and Professor, School of Environment and Architecture. We also have with us Sunny Bijlani, Director, Supreme Universal. And of course, with us Deepesh Salgya, Director, Shapurji Palanji Real Estate. Sandeep Sadh, Managing Director and Founder, MumbaiPropertyExchange.com and Samir Jasuja, Founder and MD of Prop Equity, armed with all the data. I don't think there is anyone who argues with that well-established fact that Mumbai is the most expensive city in the country to live in and to buy a home in, which makes it, as we say, the other side of the coin, the least affordable property market of the country. Sanjay Dutt, if I look at it, uh, you know, the data which Prop Equity has shared with us, there are 2 lakh unsold homes in Greater Mumbai. Take that, the numbers range from 1 lakh 70 to 2 lakh unsold apartments. Where are these homes? Because if, if I narrow down the data to 15 key markets that we continuously talk about and are the most habited in Mumbai, there doesn't seem to be, the number comes down crashing to 82,000 or so. 2 lakhs versus 82,000. So where are these unsold homes? Uh, Manisha, I personally feel that there, there is a clear uh, mismatch in terms of definition and interpretation of a lot of people who've been presenting data across the markets. So there is a ready inventory, which is called vacancy, uh, and that is clubbed with stock in trade or construction inventory. When you combine the two, it becomes 200,000 uh, you know, units out there in the market as unsold. But when you look at just the ready inventory, it's maybe three, four uh, percent of the market, which is actually nothing. So yes, there is an under construction. A lot of projects have been launched last three, four years, and they've not been seeing the momentum they're supposed to be. But the developers are able to regulate that. Wherever they don't see too much velocity, they actually go slow. They actually go, they divert their attention to those places which are smaller apartments, smaller tickets, and start pushing those markets, uh, those units out in the market. So therefore, that's why this uh, you know, gap that where are these unsold inventories lying. Okay. Samir, uh, you know, when, uh, so 1,70,000 is one data that I read. That was Collier's data. Prop equity data says 2 lakh. How, how are these numbers calculated? Because these numbers, when you say 2 lakh, it's a large number and it tends to be scary, isn't it? See, this 2 lakh number is a combination A of MMR, which is Mumbai Metropolitan Region comprising of Thane, Navi Mumbai and Mumbai. Okay. If you see out of that, Mumbai will have an extremely small share and I've been saying that all along that Mumbai has a demand supply mismatch where demand is more and supply is less. Uh, at certain price points, of course, but Thane and uh, Navi Mumbai is majority of it. A, B, this is projects that have been launched uh, in the market officially. So these projects have come into the market as mostly under construction properties up for sale. Uh, and you could see the additions happening uh, because of huge supply in Dombivali or say a Panvel market or some micro markets in Thane. That adds up to most of the numbers, which is basically an affordable to mid market. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's break up this market as Samir said. Mumbai, unsold stock, if I look at it between first six months of uh, 2014 versus first six months of 2015, Mumbai alone there's actually been a decrease of 3.5% in terms of unsold stock. Navi Mumbai, there's been a decrease of 5.8%. 
and in Thane, unsold stock has actually gone down by 16 and a half percent. I think this really, Sunny Bijlani, I mean, this really, really uh, beckons the question, are we slicing the data too much and trying to create a, a scare where there isn't really one? Or do you think that the sales have substantially slowed down and there is a real cause of worry? And be upfront and honest about it. Give me a answer from a buyer perspective, not a developer perspective. If I've understood your question correctly, you're talking about breaking the entire unsold inventory into the three different uh, micro markets, Navi Mumbai, Thane, and uh, Mainstream Mumbai. And uh, what really you need to look at, uh, and from a buyer's perspective, is the business is extremely localized. If a buyer is looking at the western suburbs of Mumbai, from Andheri up until Borivili, or you know, that also is dissected further. He is not going to go out there looking at New Bombay or Thane. So for a buyer, that kind of inventory in the market is irrelevant. So what is critical to really understand is the local micro market in which you are looking at a purchase. For that local micro market, you need to analyze what's the fundamental of that market. Because historically, even today as we stand, there are some markets that are commanding a premium and have not even in the worst times have not corrected because of curtailed supply. And that will historically not correct. So it's critical to understand which micro market you're looking at. And the fundamental of every micro market being different, you need to look at it differently. So for me, for a buyer, what he or she needs to look at today is if I'm making a purchase, firstly, what's my time duration of the purchase? If it's for self-use, my time duration is nothing less than seven years. And if it's investment, then obviously it's a different story altogether. Over a period of seven years, historically, you have not seen prices not increase in Mumbai, given any cycle that you've looked at. So today is uh, an option that the buyer has where he's getting uh, various schemes as far as financing is concerned and financing the deal. These options are not available in every, market, every cycle in every market. So for a buyer, it's critical to look at the developer, critical to look at what's the uh, credibility and the past records and very very critical is to segment what is the product grade and category in every micro market today there is a, at least a 30 percent spread between a C category product and an A category product and that is defined by not just the location but primarily the product per se so the per square foot rates in let's say a micro market like uh, probably you know car bandra santa cruz if I'm looking at a micro market for discussion purpose, you're getting something at even say 40, 45,000 going right up to even say 70,000 per square foot. Okay. And I'm talking about on carpet area basis. Okay, so Sunny, I got that point and I would like to, I would like to take from that point which you just made that if you look at a seven year period, there isn't going to be a period where you will see prices in any of the Mumbai real estate market cracking. Well, why do we have to go back in history so much? Last 12 months have been considered to be the dullest, absolutely the most terrible for real estate across the country and Mumbai specifically. If I look at break greater Mumbai into three and say Mumbai, Navi Mumbai and Thane, let me see what's happened to the prices and this is prop equity data. It says that in Mumbai prices have gone up by 6%. I'm talking about year on year for a six month period that I just outlined and of course the data will come up on your screen. Navi Mumbai prices have gone up by 4%. It's only Thane where they have been flat to gone down marginally by 2%. So this is one of the toughest markets. Sandeep, what's really going on? I mean, here you have a buyer who's waiting on the sideline saying prices are going to come down, come down. But if I look at the price charts, they are, they're stuck. They're not coming down. Except in Thane where they seem to be very muted, they aren't coming down in rest of Mumbai. See, Manisha, every micro market in Mumbai has a different story. Uh, we have a Bandra market again, which is, which is evergreen, which will remain evergreen. We have a Thani market, which has got majority of stock there. And the best part is that we've got the best developers there and making one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedrooms. And the inventory there is spread between today till five years you have construction going on there. Similarly, come back to Mumbai for a minute. We have construction activities across in every sector. And the prices here are a little damp right now. But I think there is a chance of a 5%, 10% correction to bring the traction back. And I think that will be healthy if they go down by 5%, 10% so that the traction comes back. What everybody is looking for is right now is traction. And if traction comes back, 
everything will go right. Okay, so 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 there's a voice which says prices are likely to correct five to ten percent. They should come down. Deepesh Salgya, I read your article in detail. Very interestingly, arguments presented on the Mumbai market. In fact, it's one of the most lucid, well justified argument that I've read. Tell me, are prices likely to come down? Take any market in Mumbai. You've been studying this market. Are there pockets where prices are likely to come by, come down by five to ten percent? Let's forget about a blanket. Uh, correction across the greater Mumbai region? See, basically, in the last 40 years, we have seen only one bear market mm -hmm. in Mumbai. And that I, I think there's no asset or commodity class that has got a, this record in India. And every time you ask anybody in the last 40 years, he would have said, Bombay mein makan mehenge hote hain. Have you ever heard anybody saying, ever in the last 40 years, that homes are cheaper? From 95 to 99, we saw 50% drop in prices. I think Sandeep would uh, vouch for it. Still, we said, Prices are expensive. Today, yes, there's a slowdown. There's no doubt about it. But the fundamental reason for that is that today, a lot of developers have actually made three, four, and five bedroom apartments. The demand actually is much, is actually shifted to studio one BHK and two BHK. So there's, there's a demand mismatch. And that is the reason you have a slowdown. The products that are available are not selling. And the products that are in demand, there are no products for that. I think that's a fundamental shift, structural shift in demand pattern that has led to a slowdown. All right. Okay. So let's then just come down to this one basic question on what is really happening to affordability. Mumbai mein ghar saste nahi hote, but the fact of the matter is that only 9% of the population in this city earns more than 60,000 rupees per month. And at a median income of about 20,000 rupees per month, majority of Mumbaikers can't even afford to buy the lowest price of even a single bedroom public housing unit, which costs anywhere between 14 to 20 lakh rupees. So let's not circle the issue. I think the bigger question here is, can, can housing as, a, as, as an overall availability of units be made cheaper to a home buyer? Now, four things which constitute uh, making of a house, land, regulatory and taxes costs, the FSI, how much can you build, and finally, the cost of construction. So I think, Mr. Shetty, the biggest problem that I've heard in Mumbai, from Mumbaikers is that there isn't enough land, and, and the cost of land is really high. How true is that? Can, can, can the policymakers do anything to bring down the land costs in Mumbai? Yeah, I think there are, uh, I mean, the way I look at the problem is this, that, uh, uh, you know, 50% uh, of the city lives in slums. So 50% is entitled for free housing, all right? The 20% of city lives in dilapidated buildings. And the policy says all of these people are entitled for free housing. There are 20% people who live on, in old cooperative housing societies. And there are, there are enough policy to kind of move the, uh, to, uh, for them to get f uh, new free housing. So if you look at, if you look at this, this market share, you see it's 10% people who are paying for 90% of people who are entitled to for free housing. And that is exactly one of the, one of the prime reasons why you know, things are so expensive in the city. Huh, that is so, and, and that has to do a lot with the popular policy of giving free housing to people who can, to, a, to an extent, afford. You know, so we are channelizing funds to for a, for a certain for a, for a, for a certain in a certain popular direction. The second thing is, in the last ten years or so, the population within island city has decreased. And within the entire of, the, of, 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 of Mumbai has also stagnated. So there are no new people who are coming to Mumbai who are kind of creating more demand. All right? No new business has come to the city. You know, large businesses have actually moved out of the city. So you know, the, it, you do not have a you do not have a you do not, do not have a situation where uh, there's, there's a lot of demand which is kind of being pushed within 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 Mumbai. Thirdly, as what Sandeep was saying, that you know you you have a demand for smaller houses and large houses are getting getting built. And fourthly, at this moment in the last one year or so, and the next two years, coming two years, you have some kind of a policy ambiguity with the with the with the with the development plan, which is kind of you know which is not clear at the moment as to which direction it is going. So all this put together, you have a kind of a you know wait and watch kind of 
response to the entire uh, situation. So I think that is that is it. What 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 it appears uh, to the situation to be. Okay, what I'm hearing is that okay, there is a demand supply mismatch. In some ways, uh, what will sell is not available, and and probably new demand from migrants is not building up because it's it's stopped being an affordable city. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, is that true that there is at least? I mean, let's. Let's not talk about the prices, where they're likely to go. Existing stock, we all know, cannot come down more than what it already has uh, through various schemes. But is there a clear demand and supply mismatch in Mumbai's real estate market? So, you know, the demand drivers of Mumbai city, Manisha, are banking and financial services, IT, uh, you know, pharmaceutical, corporate houses, consulting firms, legal firms. They were the growth engines of municipal limits Mumbai city. Uh, there has been a setback to these sectors. So they've not been growing and, and therefore it was well articulated that there is no new driver on the market. But when you go suburbs, so that's where the landscape changes dramatically. When you go to Thana district, which is Washi to Thana city and beyond and Dombivali and all, the IT sector is the new demand driver. So TCS has just signed two, 20 lakh square feet in Thane. They've created a very large job banks. And like that, there are about four other IT companies who will be signing close to 60 lakh square feet. If you translate that into 60,000 jobs, basically, and if you translate that into 1,000 square feet, that each of those buyers of employees will buy an apartment in Thana district. 60,000 demand units will be created within Thana district or neighboring city. So I feel that Thana as a district is behaving somewhat like Bangalore, Pune. There is a lot of land because there are large industrial land parcels. So whether it's, you know, pharmaceutical company, engineering company, they all are giving up their land and monetizing their assets. And that is getting converted into residential townships. And the FSI is pretty good. Uh, at the same time, the Thane Belapur Road, which has been, which has been an industrial chemical zone belt, is now being taking shape and transitioning into IT belt. IT companies, which were considering Mumbai as the most expensive place, suddenly find that Mumbai Thane Belapur Road is the second cheapest corridor in terms of FSI cost. Hinjewadi is 700 rupees FSI. And Mumbai, Thane Bilapur Road is about 1,000 rupees FSI. This is cheaper than Manesar, Bangalore, and Chennai, by the way. This has happened after the Maharashtra government has come out with new IT policy and extra FSI. I think this will trigger a new demand from, the, uh, from a sector which has been a dominant sector for Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, Pune, and not so much for the Mumbai city. So there, the landscape will change. And if there is an oversupply because of lot of land available there, it's good news because the, the houses are affordable. I personally feel that majority of the developers who were smart and savvy all three years ago came out with smaller units, apartments, so I to some extent don't agree. Overall, there may be a mismatch and I agree to some extent, but last three years the markets have been down and a lot of developers have revised their plan and come out with, if not necessarily one bedroom, they have come out with smaller three bedrooms and smaller two bedrooms. So I think it takes time to align with the market. A lot has happened. Unfortunately, the economic activity and the environment overall as a business has been hampered so badly that it's taking time to recover. But overall, it's going up, Manisha. And I think Thane Belapur Road, you will see demand picking up. All right, Deepesh Salga, your article, in fact, talked about the land issue and said that, look, most of, if, if you actually divide the market between Mumbai, Navi Mumbai and Thane, then you have land in Navi Mumbai, you have land in Thane. Sanjay has just outlined the possibilities which come up with a lot of land available. You do, you can have affordable housing, but then you, in Mumbai per se, what happens? I mean, land's all locked up, isn't it? So, so if you were to make the main Mumbai city a little bit more reasonable, what are the options? That's an interesting question. Okay, what I would suggest is that you know today the various incentive policies of government 
are basically linked to how much amount of construction you do. The more you construct, the more incentive FIC you get. If government comes up with a policy in Mumbai that the smaller you build, the larger the incentive, that would, that would make a sea change in what you see in terms of affordability in Bombay. I'll explain you. For example, it is a policy in which government gives 15% incentive FSI if you build 700 square feet carpet apartments. And they say, government says, if you make 600 square feet apartments, you get 25% premium, 25% incentive FSI. If you make 500, government gives 35%. If you make 400, government gives 50% incentive FSI. What would happen as developers make, start making smaller and smaller units, their cost per square foot would come down because they would get more incentive. And when, when size of units comes down, along with per square foot cost for developer also comes down, the actual size of, uh, uh, actual value of apartment in the market would come down significantly. And then the developer would be able to cater to much wider market at much lower price points. That's it. Now, the advantage to the buyer is that he gets what he actually wants. There's a huge demand for smaller apartments. Developer, he gets to cater to a market which today, in today's costing, he cannot cater to. And government is the biggest beneficiary because the social agenda of government is fulfilled. So I think if government can come out with an incentive FSI scheme, what I would call inverse incentive FSI, where the incentive is linked to, a small, to the size of apartment and it goes higher with reducing size of apartment, I think that would bring, bring a sea change in the Mumbai housing market. Okay, gentlemen, hold your thought. I think we've discussed the basic larger question of uh, Mumbai house prices, but there's a lot more which is going on in the greater Mumbai region. Uh, there is, of course, this whole issue of FSI, does Mumbai have enough FSI and also other issues of regulatory cost approvals. We'll come back and discuss all of that because those also go on to actually add to a cost of a house or an apartment in Mumbai. Stay with us.